I'm back, I'm alive, and so is this channel and project. Today I'll bring you up to speed on the next stage which I've finally finished. When I started this channel, I promised transparency. This would be the full experience what it was like for just a normal guy to own and operate a race car. And in this video, you'll see I had delays for a variety of reasons, but finally I have some progress and I'm pretty keen to share it with you. Let's start with a quick recap of where the project's at. Previously, the local logbook inspector for Motorsport Australia came, saw the car and gave me a few key things I needed to address. Firstly, I was far too tall with the stock seat, so I needed a custom one. The existing fuel bladder was out of date and needed replacing. The other main thing was the seat belt or harnesses that came with the car were also out of date, so I had purchased another one to replace that. The trouble was the mounting system for the new harnesses was completely different to the old one. So I tracked down all of the parts I needed, came up with a plan for a new seating position on top of a new fuel cell, ordering the parts from the USA to be custom made and sent to me with a wait of around two months. And about five months ago, I released my last video on this garage lighting. So what accounts for the rest of the delay? The brand new fuel cell, as well as protective aluminium can, did arrive in around two months. And while I waited, I went through the Motorsport Australia documents, as well as consulting with the local logbook inspector, to find the appropriate fittings that I needed for the harnesses, tracking those down and ordering them from overseas. To aid me with planning and removaling panels for the next phases, I was very lucky to have some friends come up and offer to help. On the right we have Andy, he's a mechatronic engineer and his current car project is this mint vintage Commodore, which he's steadily upgrading as well as restoring. On the left we have Matt, who is a professional mechanic. His latest project is this Mitsubishi Mirage, which originally came with a poultry 1.5 litre four cylinder. But Matt is skilled at everything and has single-handedly converted this to have a 3.5 litre V6 from a Magna. This includes fabrication, wiring, ECU, everything. Matt's been having a great time driving this in many events like track days and motor carners. And if you want to see more of Matt's car, I've linked to him on YouTube in the description. The last member of our foursome is Dave, who you've seen in earlier videos. His project car is a Mazda Cosmo. He actually owned this when he was younger and repurchased it a few years ago. It has the highly desirable triple rotor 20V twin turbo engine and this one had to be rebuilt after a small coolant hose popped and killed the whole motor. The reason I'm mentioning this is that we like to get together and help each other work on our projects. For instance, recently, the shifter broke in Dave's Cosmo, and it took all four of us to take turns holding his knob while we changed out the button. On this particular night, we raised up the car, removed all of the floor, and came up with what I thought was a pretty solid plan for where things would fit. At that point, I was full of enthusiasm and ready to jump in. And then the next day, both of my dogs were dead, killed by a suspected snake. And for a while after this, I honestly didn't feel like doing anything. Eventually, our thoughts turned to getting the next puppies and preparing the yard to try and keep them out of the bushy areas and away from snakes. This meant all of my spare time went into things like fencing and debris removal, as well as doing things to try and reduce the amount of rats around so the snakes wouldn't be attracted. So more time needed to design and build solutions to keep the rats out of the animal feed and over time they stopped coming. And that takes us up to Christmas 2023 when we got our new puppies Oscar and Matilda. That cheered us all up and we spent some nice time together over Christmas and New Year's. In January, working on some of the other project cars helped with my motivation, including a fun day removing an old and busted vinyl wrap from Matt's Mirage as demonstrated expertly by Dave. I also went out shopping for the last components, including the proper roll cage tube, which I found from a place called Andrew's Race Cars. The owner of this place was a legend, not only selling me the tube I needed, but giving me advice and the correct filler rods I needed for the welding ahead. And that brings us up to the end of January, start of February, where the work for what you're seeing in this video started properly. So here is that plan we came up with at the start of November last year. For the harnesses, the six of these bushings that needed welding in. The first two are straightforward, going behind me under the roll hoop. The two for the hips seem to have pretty obvious places as well. But the two for the crutch needed to go somewhere where there was no existing frame. So the plan was to add a section to the chassis, and this would mean I could fabricate this bit largely off the car and dial my welder in. As this MS Paint quality graphic demonstrates, that would have all six harness points sorted, and once given a suitable base, 
allow me to package in the fuel cell and other components before constructing the custom phone seat above them. To commence, I firstly had to cut out all of the welded on sections that mounted equipment in their previous locations. For instance, these bits held the old carbon seat. And then in a very productive night, once again assisted by Andy, we drilled out all of the rivets holding on this side of the firewall as I would need access to the other side of this to weld the underside of the shoulder bushings. We then got to work expanding all of these holes to instead take rib nuts so this wouldn't be such a big deal to get the panels on and off in future. Some of them, as you can see, were very straightforward. Other ones needed some tricks to be able to get the tools in so close to the edge of the sheet metal. And even then, progress was slow and annoying. With perseverance, we got the job done, and I'm hoping this is a good investment in the future when everything goes back on. Time to drill some important holes, starting with the shoulder harness bushings. And to get this perfect, I 3D printed a jig to align the drill. I used that on the top and bottom to get some pilot holes started, and then switched to a step drill on a flex drive to open them all the way up to the required 20mm. Fitment was exactly what I wanted. A tap with a rubber mallet would move them gently into place, and not needing an extra hand to hold them would help a lot once I got to welding. Next, the bushings on the side for the waist, and we marked out some spots and measured them with tape to double check they were even. I also checked what access would be like with the TIG torch. With everything confirmed, I could center punch, and then once again, bore out 20mm with a step drill and that got us to 4 out of 6 in position. My next job would be fabricating that new piece to hold the last two bushings. And to assist with that, I spent as little as I could and bought this tube notcher from Vivor. I took a small length of that roll bar tube I purchased and then measured, marked and drilled out the holes for the bushings. I then trimmed down the bushings themselves and then tried to pick a good location which would set the width that I needed to notch. After measuring the angle, I actually 3D printed a prototype version here just to make sure everything would work out. I then modified the geometry to form a jig that I could rest against the side of the notcher and set the exact angle that I was after. 3D printing is amazing for these one-off jobs. I took a deep breath, applied some cutting spray and then patiently worked through the metal with the hole saw. The first side couldn't have gone any better. But for the second side, the vise actually vibrated loose and it was a little bit misaligned. But we're only talking the tiniest bit of deviation from what I was after and that didn't affect the fitment of the part which tapped into place nice and snugly. As I mentioned earlier, the benefit of this plan was the first parts of welding would be done off the car and I would have scrap pieces left over so I could dial in the welder. Even better, I had some off cuts for both pieces that I could start on first. I found a sweet spot of around 60 amps and welded just one side of this bushing. I then put my vise on the floor, positioned this in it so the weld was free on the underside and whacked it as hard as I could to test the strengths of the weld. The good news was zero damage, so I was ready to move on to the real thing. So after cleaning up the surface of the parts and inserting a sacrificial bolt to maintain the integrity of the threads, I used my TIG to fusion weld each bushing. I know I'm not winning any stack of dime internet points here, but they should be more than good enough. By that stage, I was actually probably overconfident. The welding had started so well, but I was about to find out things were gonna get a lot harder. After once again checking the fit, I started stripping off the paint where I'd be welding with the wire brush. I also used the finger sander for this job because I'm so impatient. At this point, I was starting to get a preview of what it would be like trying to access these awkward areas of the car. But I pressed on, used a tape measure to double check everything was square, and commenced welding the two together. This was the hardest welding I've ever done, mainly because I just couldn't get my head anywhere near where I was welding. I couldn't really see the weld pool, and I'm sure you'll believe me when I say I dipped the tungsten in over and over and over. Also, the tube already in the car was really thin compared to the 2mm wall thickness tube that I was adding. Add some paint as well as dirt and grime and you've got a challenging scenario. To make all of this easier, I ended up using my crane to lift up the car on an angle. And before you rush to the comments to tell me the suspension is not designed for loading from these angles, I checked and there's very little load on the two tires touching the ground, so little that you can push and slide them to reposition the car. Combined with some custom velcroed on rags to cut out glare, I was able to experience some success while welding, although to be honest it really was a slog. Once the new piece was in, I cut down the bushings for the other four points. Angling the car like this gave me pretty good access to the underside and that helped a lot with the waist bushings, and the other thing that helped was thicker walled tube in these sections but access for the top of these bushings was not very easy. The TIG torch kept on colliding with things and I really struggled here. Ultimately, the strength is what matters and I'm happy with it. 
the final frontier would be welding the bushings for the shoulder mounts. And I tried to position these as narrow as I could, just to have a little bit more room for the end of the tick torch. Welding these in was comfortably the easiest of the light, partly because of the access, and also the tube was thicker so it was easier to manage the heat. I had to stop halfway across the top and upgrade my TIG torch because the cap was far too long to give me access. With a ground down tungsten and a shorter cap, this gave me the access I needed to finish from the top. To do the underside, I experimented with some pretty interesting positions, but ultimately there just wasn't enough room for my big head. I ended up resting in place my old carbon fibre seat, just so I could lean across it, putting my full weight on that shoulder, my head close to the weld area, and my arms free to do what they needed to do. And once I was properly set up and braced, this ended up being one of the easiest areas of all to complete. And I made sure to take photos of the underside, as proof for the logbook inspector, that the bushings were welded on either end as per the regulations. So after a little bit of cleaning up and smoothing, as well as welding up some of the holes left from removing rivets, I was ready to prime and paint. Now at this point, if you're expecting a good paint job, then you really don't know me very well, and I would recommend watching this video first. I would describe my technique as minimum effort, using the wire brush to try and smooth the edge of the paint, then cleaning everything with paint and grease remover before hastily applying some edge primer. If you're going to post in the comments about overspray, well, I've never heard of that word. After a couple of coats of edge primer, I then moved on to some black. And yes, this is me painting over the mud trails left behind from wasps rather than scraping it off. Just remember that pretty much everything I'm painting here is going to be covered by other panels as well as seats and bodywork. Here it is with everything black and shiny, for now at least. To complete this part of the project, the only thing left to do is to insert the eyelets and do a test fitting of the new harness. I haven't bothered talking the eyelets yet because they will need to come out for the next part of the fabrication and I won't be able to get the final adjustment of the belts done until the seat is in position, but ultimately I was able to position myself in the rough position and ensure that everything was more or less in the right place. So finally, things are back on track, and at the moment I'm quite motivated to keep things moving. Next up, you might have noticed there's some more holes to patch up from where the old seat was mounted, and then after that I need to pick the position for the fuel cell, battery, as well as the fire tank, and weld in some brackets for those. So in the next episode, expect some more welding for that, although thankfully it's mostly off the car this time. And above all, hopefully it's nowhere near as long until that next video is out. Before you can buy a race car, you need to make sure one, you have enough room, two, you can afford it, and three, and probably most importantly, you have permission from your better half. Believe it or not, my wife was all for it and said she wanted us to be a race car family. Wifey! Is this a trap? <laughs>